flying taxis, minesweeper drones, Adobe Firefly AI, augmented reality mirrors, magnetic keyboard switches and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with some flying machine news this week, EV toll progress continues and this week Archer Aviation announced a deal with United Airlines to launch the first air taxi route in Chicago between O'Hare International Airport and Vertiport Chicago, which is located near the Chicago Loop Business District. Passengers will be able to travel to and from the airport using Archer's midnight aircraft in approximately 10 minutes, cutting the journey time by almost an hour when compared to rush hour traffic. In other news, Lyft Aircraft also completed their first piloted demo of the unique-looking hexacraft this week in Japan, in front of representatives from Japan's Civil Aviation Bureau. Moving over to Belgium now, in what they say is a world's first, City Mesh announces that it is introducing a network of 70 safety drones across the country to assist emergency services. The idea is that as soon as an emergency call to police or firefighters comes in, these drones auto-deploy from rooftop boxes and are the first at the scene. Each drone has both 4K and thermal imaging video feeds, and they are remotely piloted using a network of pilots that are always on standby. The network will be rolled out in all 35 emergency service districts of Belgium, with two drones in a box being available for each. Researchers from the Autonomous Systems Lab at ETH Zurich have been working on a drone that can perform autonomous and contactless landmine detection. To achieve this, they designed a tricopter with a metal detector on one side. This combination enables more advanced flight capabilities than other methods which are required to be close and parallel to the terrain and gives the drone five degrees of freedom to work close enough to autonomously detect mines without ever touching the land. The trend of medical supplies being shuttled about using robots and drones continues, this time with a fairly unique drone. The Jedsi is a wall-sitter drone that can land and take off directly on windowsills and balconies, increasing delivery speed and widening drop-off locations. More delivery news this week. KiwiBot are another food delivery service which has been carrying out autonomous deliveries across college campuses in the US. Similar to Starship's offering, these bots are distinguished by their emotive eyes on the front. The company recently announced $10 million in funding to expand their service. KiwiBot, a robotic last-mile delivery service that has completed over 250,000 food deliveries with high-driving robots, today announces a tailor-made $10 million financing partnership with asset financing group Kineo Finance. The agreement will help KiwiBot with its manufacturing and scaling needs, growing its robotic fleet and disrupting the delivery-as-a-service industry. Seemingly all stages of logistics are going through transformation from automation at the moment. This time around we have Slip Robotics, which has come up with a different way to load and unload trucks. Unlike autonomous loading arms like the one from Boston Dynamics, which requires the truck to be parked in a bay during the process, Slip system basically uses giant self-driving pallets which can move the entire truck contents in and out quickly for processing elsewhere, freeing up the truck to be used again almost instantly. In other industrial robotics news, Built Robotics unveiled a massive autonomous pile-driving machine primarily aimed at installing huge solar farms. The RPD35 from Built Robotics is the world's first autonomous piling system. It combines four steps, layout, pile distribution, pile driving and as built into one package. With the RPD35, a two-person crew can install piles for more productivity than traditional methods. In their demonstration video, they say the RPD35 can carry 200 piles at a time and in a day can install three times more into the ground than a fully manned crew. At the recent ProMat 2023 conference, Agility Robotics demonstrated how their digit bipedal robot can work fully autonomously in a replica warehouse setting. The live-streamed video showed the robot carrying out repetitive tasks for over 30 minutes. It seems general-purpose humanoid robots are on the cusp of being used in workplaces, and even though this one is a bit slow, it's just the beginning. Tesla showed a video of their bot working in one of their factories too recently and it seems like the start of a trend. Moving on to artificial intelligence. Fresh off their other announcement of Copilot for Microsoft 365 apps last week, the company has now demonstrated their vision of incorporating GPT-4 chat directly into GitHub with Copilot X. 
the vision shows users having context-aware conversations with the AI model, giving them the ability to ask it for help with tasks like explaining sections of code or finding bugs. GitHub states that the promo video doesn't necessarily show what the final product will end up being like, and it is not available to the public yet. Users can sign up for a waiting list to be notified of updates. Software giant Adobe unveiled Firefly this week. This new family of creative generative AI models allows users of all skill levels to both generate images and text effects very easily, but also to alter existing creative work. This is very impressive, and if the actual product lives up to the hype of the demonstrations, I believe this will be game-changing. It's not currently available to the public, but users can request access to the Firefly beta. In a similar vein, the team behind Stable Diffusion have also introduced the Reimagine tool. This new free web-based AI model takes input images and creates variations of them. Users simply upload an image and the algorithm creates as many new images based off of it that they want. Again, I could see this being a pretty useful creative aid for concept generation, though I do wonder where things will go once the majority of creative generation is based upon other AI generations in some sort of infinite loop. One electronic story this week. Flux has launched a new keyboard on Kickstarter. It uses transparent keycaps and has a screen underneath, so users can dynamically change layouts and add shortcuts to specific apps and games. Outside of having an interesting gimmick, the reason why I included this is its magnetic key switch design. Each key has mini magnets either side, which gives mechanical haptic feedback and makes the keys snap into position. Hall effect sensors underneath measure the magnetic field to know when there's a key press. This novel approach is particularly interesting from an open hardware point of view, because traditionally high quality custom keyboards have been out of reach to most DIY designers and engineers, but now it is possible to use the same technique as the Flux to design high quality keyboards in any size, using 3D printing or laser cutting. Very cool. Sticking with 3D printing, I saw this curious multi-nozzle FDM 3D printing process recently and thought I'd share. German company Lictra have developed the FX7, which is a multi-nozzle FDM print head, which can dynamically print multiple strands of melted filament next to each other to drastically increase both speed and strength of prints. And in other news, here is another great application for 3D printing. A partnership between the Environment Agency in Abu Dhabi and marine biology experts Archie Reef has seen artificial reef structures installed in the Arabian Gulf with the goal to help coral restoration. Each tile is 3D printed with terracotta clay and has an intricate, multi-layered design. After testing them at the Hoi Ha Wan Marine Park in Hong Kong, Archie Reef found that around four times more coral survives on these compared to other materials which are traditionally used, such as concrete blocks. Lots of virtual and augmented reality news this week. Firstly, a collab between augmented reality specialist 010 and fashion brand Tommy Hilfiger brings augmented reality mirrors to stores. These mirrors allow users to walk up and virtually try on clothes from Tommy Hilfiger's latest Shawn Mendes collection. From the images and videos I've seen, it seems to do a pretty decent job mapping the clothes onto people's bodies, though I do wonder about the limitations. They're currently available at Tommy Hilfiger stores in London, Berlin and Milan. In other news, the Omni One VR treadmill has begun shipping to early investors recently too. The treadmill has a diameter of 4 feet and allows users to walk, run, jump and crouch in VR when combined with a Pico Neo 3 Pro headset which comes with it. They have some sort of investment funding drive going on currently and some of those who have supported Virtuic are apparently already receiving beta units to test. As always, do your own research before parting with your money. Pre-orders are over $2,500 plus shipping. Rocket also unveiled their new Max augmented reality glasses, which offer a theatre-style viewing experience equivalent to a 215-inch screen at 6 metres away. Other details include 50-degree field of view, 1080p micro OLED displays, 600-nit peak brightness, 120Hz refresh rate, and a 75-gram weight. They are now available for pre-order at $439, with shipping starting in at the end of April 2023. I can't wait for the next generation of folded optics to start appearing to make these kind of devices much smaller. HTC teased a new self-tracking tracker the other day too. The device is still in development, 
and the company hasn't named it yet, but they said it uses the same tracking algorithm as their Focus 3 and XR Elite headsets, so no extra base stations are required to operate. The standalone device features two high field of view cameras and an onboard processor, and can be attached to either the user or other objects and controllers. They say up to five trackers can be connected at a time. Interestingly, the company says they will be releasing the CAD files for the connectors, allowing people to make custom 3D printed accessories, and they also announced their intent for the device to be platform agnostic, so it will work with hardware from other companies too. And wrapping this week's news, a team of researchers from Rice University have been working on a system that increases virtual reality immersion and tries to take on the challenge of simulating hand feedback, so when users poke, push and squeeze virtual objects, it feels real. They designed a bracelet which not only has multiple vibration motors all the way around, but also squeezes the wrist to imitate various actions. While it's obviously not the ultimate solution to the problem yet, they say it does add more believability to virtual scenarios, and since it doesn't cover the hands like haptic gloves, they say it feels more natural to use. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.